Hi everyone, my name is Peter and in this video we're going to look at some of the security fundamentals for schools using Google Workspace for education. And let me just state first of all, if you've chosen Google Workspace as your cloud collaboration platform for your school, you're already at a very good starting point. Google Workspace is one of, if not the most secure online cloud collaboration platform out there. So let's have a look at some of these uh, recommendations. These are things which I've learned from doing numerous security audits and health checks for various schools uh, around the world. So starting with two-step verification, and this is the single best thing you can do to protect your users from unauthorized access or protecting them from cyber attacks. So two-step verification means that you're adding another layer of protection to your user account. So you're not just relying on a password, but another additional layer. That could be a text message, a yes, no prompts on your phone, or it could be using a physical security key, such as a Google Titan key or YubiKey, for example. So how you can configure this is via the admin console. So if we now go into security, authentication, and two-step verification, by default, it's enabled and available for all users. But I, what I would recommend doing is enforcing it for your staff users. So staff in schools will have access to potentially a lot of sensitive information. So it's good practice to enforce those users to use two-step verification. And you can do that by selecting your staff OU and then turning enforcement on. We can either turn it on straight away or we can turn it on from a particular date, in which case staff will get automatically uh, notified when they sign in that they need to turn on and enroll in two-step verification. Further down here, we can also can control uh, what methods we want to accept, whether that's any, or be much more secure and only use physical security keys, which are definitely the strongest way of enforcing uh, and protecting uh, your users with two-step verification. And once you've got two-step verification enabled, I highly recommend making use uh, of the user security report, which will enable you to track two-step verification enrollment and deployment. So if we go into security now, from here we can see which users have or have not enrolled in two-step verification. So if I apply a filter and look for uh, two-step verification enrollment, I can then find which users have enrolled. Very useful for particularly if you're wanting to see how many people have enrolled so far, but also looking for admin users and which admins have or have not enrolled on your domain. So the other top recommendation we have here is securing your admin accounts. So as a super admin, you have a huge amount of power. And as we know from Spider-Man, with great power comes great responsibility. So your super admin account has, of course, full access to the admin console, but also all user drive and Gmail items. So really important that your admin account is also using two-step verification. Important not to share your admin account, so make sure you're using a named admin account so that all actions within the admin console that get recorded into the audit log are identifiable as to who actually uh, completed that action. Also, just to highlight, I'd recommend not syncing your admin accounts with your local directory. I have heard instances of schools having their active directory compromised by cyber criminals who are then able to gain access to some uh, Google Workspace accounts because those are being synced from a local directory. And also really important to monitor your admin account activity. And you can do that using the security dashboard or investigation tool. And from there, you can create activity rules to provide automated notifications about what sensitive actions are happening. Offboarding security is another really important area. So uh, when you have staff or students leaving, really important to shut down their accounts in a timely manner, revoke access to uh, uh, any devices which they were using uh, those accounts with. Uh, and what I would normally recommend uh, for managing 
uh, levers and uh, X stuff. It's creating a separate OU for those users where you can move them into once you've suspended our accounts and keep them out of your active OUs containing your active users and then just have a dedicated OU for your suspended users where you can apply a different set of policies. So for instance, you might want to have a trust rule applied to that OU so that anything uh, being shared from those accounts will be blocked uh, from then on. And then ultimately, after a period of time has passed, you will uh, want to delete those accounts. And just having them in a separate OU makes that process much easier to manage. Another area I'd highly recommend reviewing is whether you've got the proper DNS records configured to ensure that messages coming from your domain are validated. So you can do this by establishing an SPF record and DKIM record to authenticate those messages. And then you can set up a DMARC record to enforce that policy. And that policy can either be to reject or quarantine those messages. And a super easy way to check this in Google Workspace is to make use of the security health page. So if we scroll down here and check this domain, so unfortunately this demo domain doesn't actually have a, uh, a DMARC record configured yet. We don't have an SPF record configured yet and it actually highlights which uh, domains we've not configured that for. Uh, but we do have a DKIM record configured for all of our domains. So I would recommend making use of a security health page. It checks some key settings for security across your domain and any which um, do meet those recommendations will get a, a green tick. Any which don't, you get this recommendation box here where you can read more about it and get some guidance from Google. So that's one way of checking your DNS records. You can also, of course, use other third party tools such as uh, MX Toolbox, which is a, a free online website for checking and verifying DNS records. Okay, so next on our list is Gmail safety features. So Gmail also has some advanced features to help protect against phishing and spoofing. And these are super easy to turn on. So if we go back into the admin console and now go into apps, Google Workspace and Gmail. And once we get here, if we go into safety and within safety, we want to ensure that all of these protections are turned on. So these are for protecting attachments we also have controls here for protecting against links and external images, and also spoofing and authentication. And for each of these, we can choose what we want to happen. So in this example, we're protecting against domain spoofing based on similar domain names. We can either keep that message in the user inbox and just show a warning. We can move that to the user spam, or we can quarantine that message. And you have these controls for each of these items. So I highly recommend ensuring that you've got these advanced features turned on to offer the best protection for your domain. Third party app access. So this area received a lot of attention last year when Google made the decision to prevent under 18s from signing into untrusted third party apps using their school Google Workspace account. So you can monitor this all from your admin console by going into security, access and data control and API controls. And from here you can see what third party apps are being used, what you've already configured, but you can also uh, make uh, set policies for what apps staff can or can't use and what services are available to those. So I normally recommend restricting access to both Drive and Gmail, as both of these services can contain a lot of sensitive data. And I think it's a good idea to have a trusted list of apps uh, which you want to allow access to those services and not just allow staff to use any app they find on the internet with their Google Drive, which as I say, can contain a lot of sensitive data. Okay, well, that's it for this video. I hope that was useful. If you've got any questions, then please feel free to let me know in the comments and I'll try and get back to you. Thanks for watching.